As we've been tackling the AstraZeneca story this week, some have had the first jab, are concerned about going back for a second. Some countries are talking about being able to mix vaccines. And of course, as we talk about new variants down the track, mixing of vaccines might become a more important conversation too. How safe is it at this stage to do so? You know, so, so the answer is, is I think, that it's fairly simple. You know, the guidelines are the guidelines, and it's not up, not up to me to promote any kind of, you know, mayhem or anarchy in this. Um, but if you ask me as a basic immunologist, can I see any argument why it would be unsafe or poor practice to mix and match vaccines? Um, no, I can't see any at all. Um, you know, it, it would still induce great immunity. Um, no problem with that whatsoever. I'm still reeling from your comment, Danny, about even scientists like a pint. But uh, I, I, I know many, many yes. uh, people in your profession who do like a drink. But, um, but, but, in, but in terms of the confidence, actually, I had a lot of confidence by someone you know very well, I'm sure, Sarah Gilbert and others, when they say, look, when the variants come up, we can tweak our drugs as well. Now, plus the fact we've got so much capacity coming online as well, I'm perhaps a little bit more optimistic than you in regards of the, how precarious the situation is. Were you just being cautious then or you're really still concerned? I, I, I am concerned. I think because you know, you know, we we've all learnt to you know to to sort of you know to read the, you know, the events of the last year, and this really is a very kind of um, devastating and tricky virus. Um, you know, and we, you know we're in an arms race with the virus, and so far it's kind of beat us hands down, hasn't it? Every step of the way, and every time we thought it couldn't get any worse, it has. So um, you know that gives me little room for complacency. Um, on the other hand, as I said, you know I think these are great vaccines. Um, I think they're better than we thought they were a few months ago at dealing with the variants of concern, um, even some of the nastier ones like you know Brazil and and, and South Africa. Um, so, you know, I, I, I remain at that sort of balanced tipping point. I'm hoping for a good summer. But, you know, I, I suspect that people watching CNBC are, are a highly numerate bunch and can themselves sort of work out the, um, you know, the risk benefit analysis of very rare vaccine side effects versus, you know, protective immunity and getting out of this pandemic. Professor, I think what remains uncertain, though, for the audience is uh, travel at this point. We're hearing very mixed messages from governments about what will be allowed over summer and also what is safe to do, given the, the whole variant story is still playing out. What do you think is uh, the most likely scenario as we count down to this further reopening across borders? Well, I don't know what's likely. I, th I, th I think there will be you know, massive pressure to, to reopen borders. Um, and I think that's the area where I, I worry most because I can see the way of, of um, limita limiting damage if people want to, you know, go to the pub or go to a rock festival or whatever they want to, want to do. If they want to kind of resume normality in terms of flying around the world, perhaps to regions of the world where we don't even have a complete data set of which viral variants are circulating there because there's no genomic sequencing. Um, you know, I'm so worried that we could be back to where we were, you know, think back to um, you know, January, February 2020, when we saw that kind of slow motion car crash of imported cases, you know, traveling around the world, and somehow we didn't address it.